for the Wacom again to crisis and business continuity and of course today we'll be looking at something exciting learning from crisis how do we learn from crisis how do organizations actually learn from existing crisis or an ongoing crisis or learn from crisis that happens in, in an industry or happens to another organization or from the organization uh, itself and what are those some of those less lessons from from previous crises that we can take into so today my learning outcome absolutely is about getting getting us to look at what we've done before and try to look at why do we uh, why do we need to learn from from crisis why do organization needs to learn from crisis and we're trying to apply some basic um, uh, theoretic concepts and, and, and adapt that to learning from crisis and try to look at some of those actionable strategies that improve organizational learning from crisis. What I will be covering today and then of course I have a question for you uh, in your own words write down the meaning of crisis. What is your own definition of crisis? Okay, because be before we can understand how do we learn from crisis, you need to understand what crisis is. And of course, I'm, I'm glad that we've covered this in the past. So this is an exercise for you. You can do it at your own time. Take your time, write down the meaning of crisis. And then we know time and time again, uh, a case in, in, in mind, Boeing uh, 737 MAX um, developed uh, a wonderful new ways of flying and this is obviously has a, um, this particular aircraft was involved um, in, 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 uh, in, in a crash uh, and, and then of course there have been some investigations so I wanted to, to go and, and research Boeing 737 MAX and see what we learn from there so what are the um, lessons you can learn from there and then of course another task they have to use also to look at the meaning of learning so when do we say learning what do we mean at what point do we learn so time to learn so is learning from crisis a question of mindset is it true is it false possibly at the end of these lectures uh, you will be able to come to term with, with, with that reality check so what uh, can I say to myself if you have a fixed mindset there are people that have a fixed mindset there are people that have a growth mindset and this also happens to organizations as well so uh, for example you can have organization with a fixed mindset um, you can have uh, individual with a growth mindset you can have another organization with a growth mindset and then of course uh, uh, comparing that to other things as well so that being said uh, the other things I want to mention is somebody with a fixed mindset could be looking at I'm not good at this another person will be looking at uh, with a good mindset what am I missing okay um, I'm not uh, awesome at, at this uh, am I on the right track I'm, I'm I'm giving up. I will use some of these strategies that I have learned and then I will apply it. And this happens to organizations. So it could be, oh, we're doing something right. Oh, we're doing it right. So it could be, okay, what could be better? What can we improve? What can we do uh, differently? What can we add? So these are really an important aspect of um, learning. When, when, uh, the way you look at things, the way you approach things, the way you manage things. And when you look at failures, um, it's really an opportunity uh, to begin again uh, more intelligently. And this is what, what this particular quote was uh, attributed to Henry Ford, uh, that failure is an opportunity to begin again, to, to learn more intelligently. And the same thing applies to crisis situations as well. Now, crisis enable organization to uh, I see it as a moment of pause, where you're taking a break, you're trying to reassess what you, what you can do Better, what you can do differently and what impact what what changes you can make to your operation to your to the way you serve your customer to the way you deliver value to the way you generate value so it gives you that opportunity to do so. and then of course I, I I talked earlier about the uh, the Boeing 737 max so you can go and and obviously read around that and see what lessons what are the things that you can pick up from 
from there. So there are a number of things that you can pick up from, from the case. And then, of course, identify some of the lessons that you can learn uh, from, from the 737 max. Now, I want you, once you've done that, so I want you to write down five identifiable uh, lessons from the uh, Boeing 737 MAX. What are those lessons uh, you, can, you can learn from we can identify? And then the final part is, uh, again, failure we, we see is the success if we, if we learn from it. So if we're able to learn from failures, uh, it is not failure in itself, but you should be able to learn from failures. And within organizations, this is where I'm going. So I've been giving you some background. This is where I'm going now. Now, you, we know that there are individual learning in an organizational context. There are, there, you can have team learning, all right, among the teams. And then you can have organizational learning, right? So all this needs to combine for, for learning from, from crisis and learning from failures to. So what is organizational learning? Organization as a whole learning together collectively. So it's a process of detecting and correcting error within the organizations. And it's only a failure if we don't learn from it. If we don't learn from crisis, we should be able to learn not just to crisis that happened to the organization, but to uh, other organizations outside, uh, maybe the industries as well. And that's why you're looking at uh, ways, what are the, when does organization learn and when does organizational learning actually occur? So learning, of course, when individual within organization experience that uh, uh, situations and try to find out, try to look at the 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 thought what what could have caused this and what can we do differently and and then finding the thought kind of made those changes happens and so that it doesn't happen again on behalf of the organization so you can look in at maybe the experience of surprising mismatch between what they expect and the actual results maybe they projected to 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 achieve certain outcome but it's sort of deviate the actual um, result is different from the initial expectations and then you're trying to find out okay what could what could explain this and what can we do differently and the other things to look at is that you seeing how you respond to the mismatch uh through a process of thought and further action that leads you to uh, modify some images within your organizations and try to understand some of the things that are happening you can restructure your activities as well so that that being said um, so learning, organizational learning is a collective collectivity of individual learning within the organization. Remember, I mentioned individual learning, I mentioned teams learning, and I also mentioned organizational learning. Now, collective learning is what where you're going, and that happens where, in addition to the learning process at the individual levels, may occur uh, independently of each individual, but you want to make sure that it's very cohesive within the organization, so it cannot take place. Um, if um, employees in the organization are prevented from learning. That's something to keep in mind. We saw what happens with then there are different forms of, of, of uh, organizational uh, learning, like organization specific learning that is relating to learning relating to that particular organization that's involved in a crisis and is trying to learn from that own experience. And there is the isomorphic learning where organization is trying to analyze surrounding factors what happens in within the industry and try to also learn from it and extrapolate that learning and there is the iconic um, um, uh, learning as well where you're looking at uh, um, which represents more like a broad and generic uh, form of learning where you've been uh, in form of disaster uh, situations and you're trying to digest it and this may be a, a, a form of maybe looking at uh, previous crisis and 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 what you can learn from 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 them and this is based on the work of uh, uh Toth and, and writers back in 1992 uh learning from disasters so three ways in which organizations so one, once you've done that there are some learning di uh, disability uh, uh that have been identified uh by saying in uh, 1990 uh posits that several perceived um habits or, or mindsets uh which he refers to uh learning disability uh, can can have an impact. So, for example, um, my positions where you're looking at maybe your responsibility, the enemy is out there. You're trying to 
uh, blame someone else, you will look at this in, when we look at crisis communication, for example, some of the strategies that organizations use, there is the illusion of taking charge. So, and of course, they also mention something around everything having a cause and effect. And there is the parable of the uh, boiling frog. So the inability or willingness of people to actually detect uh, or, or to, to react or be aware of threats that occur gradually. So this is what that parable was uh, looking at. So that there's that delusion of learning from experience. Experience being uh, the best teacher has been said that um, has been captured. And then, of course, you also looking at learning organization company. What are those things that makes uh, a, a learning organization? Uh, we've we've listen things like team learning. I mentioned uh, mental model, shared visions, and system thinking. So these collectively help businesses to to learn. Collectively help organizations to learn um, and, and make many of what is going on in the business. And then, of course. There are four elements of organizational learning that have been captured. There is the culture of continuous improvement. There is the um, defined learning structures, having a, a proper structures in place. And of course, you have the intuitive knowledge processes and supportive uh, leaders. So collectively, these four elements help organizations to learn. And of course, this learning may relate to crisis or may relate to other other incidents or a trend or disruptions within the business environment. And somebody is saying, look, this happened to certain industries and this happened to certain organizations, to that organization, to these organizations. How, how do we learn from, from that so that it doesn't happen to us? And, and collectively, four uh, of these elements can help businesses to, to be able to capture that and, and disseminate this uh, these practices or the best practices that have been identified across a so that that will lead me to uh, the point where you're looking at organizational uh, learning and adaptation so where you're trying to look at your market positioning you're trying to look at your organizational alignment you're looking at your business uh, stakeholders integration and organizational performance collectively and you assessing them you reassessing them you're trying to execute the right strategy for your organizations and that's really important for businesses for any any organization to take into consideration my point about developing a uh, learning culture um, you can look at your how do you align learning with your business with your organization how do you integrate learning with your business process how do you provide appropriate uh, learning opportunities as well for your teams, for you, for the individuals within the organization. So these are important questions to take into consideration when trying to develop a learning culture within the organization. And it may also where start from the hiring process. But I'm just going to uh, also look at these particular uh, framework models of learning from from failures based on the work of Lab Reed back in 2013. Uh, they list at some of the generic uh, lessons from, from, from failures, uh, looking at too much belief in previous success. Sometimes organization thinks maybe the fact that you were successful uh, with, with certain things yesterday doesn't mean that you'll be successful with it today. If you don't keep improving, if you don't keep updating, if you're not aware of what is what changes, what trend might be happening within your business environment. Uh, so that, that is one lesson. And we saw we, this has been cited um, using the case of the Titanic disaster back in, in 1990, uh, 1912. All right, so there's the other other lessons that was identified with them. Uh, lesson two, coping with growth. How do you cope with growth as an organization? How do you help your business to cope with growth? Sometimes businesses grow, but you need to have these sustainable uh, plans and measures in place to be able to cope with this particular uh, growth. So that's an important thing to think. And then the other point I want to mention is the generic lesson uh, three, which is about misconception or fashionable paradigm. For example, it may be the fact that, yeah, we have, we employ lean thinking, we have business continuity, we have these, we have um, uh, crisis management plans in place and all that. Uh, without the actual uh, testing and exercise of this plan, uh, it's just a fashionable um, paradigm. And of course, legislation is where compliance with legislation dramatic impact as well. So that has been captured. And the, the notion or the attitude that, oh, I operate you fix it attitude. 
So this is a testament uh, treatment of incidents in isolations where you're treating incidents in isolations. And then of course, the, the, um, one of the things that uh, we've seen time and time again is that no news is a good news. Somehow, um, it, it doesn't just uh, sit well with many crisis situations. So if it's not broken, why do you need to fix it? So persuasive, that is passive attitude uh, to, to reach. And, and interestingly, we'll be looking at rich culture We'll be looking at how organizations can actually navigate and then bad news bad person so some organizations believe that oh if you bring bad news oh that's that means you you you're not my bad news and you try to suppress it but it's not going to help the organizations so the the eight points is around the um the fact that everyone's um own my chain is like the highest priority to him in the maintenance surface so if Every machine is the highest priority to the operators and the one who uh, shout out loud gets his job done. So solving a crisis is a forgotten experience, they say, and they try to look at break down um, whether those um, issues relating to crisis situations, for, for example, can be captured. You know, how, how can we capture it? How can we how can we capture it for future learning? School skis left with Delima. That has been mentioned so i'm really glad that you're able to join me today uh next uh, next time we will be looking at uh, uh organizational culture and the crisis prone firm so i i, I appreciate the fact that you, you take your time to join me and i hope is what your time on to see you again on today so bye for now